morning, Mount Carmel area, and welcome to MCA Live. I'm Taylor Conscious. And I'm Darla Hood. Here are today's announcements and our news stories. Today is Tuesday, November 26th, day three. A reminder that today is an Act 80 early dismissal day, and there is no school until Tuesday, December 3rd, for the Thanksgiving break. Keystone exams are scheduled for Wednesday, December 4th through this December 10th. Schedules are posted in homerooms. We will follow the two-hour delay schedule for the first four test days, and there will be no morning news during testing. MCA Live will return Thursday, December 12th. For last-minute help with Keystone content, check out the classroom clips on the WKMC TV website. Videos with many of the topics are covered. We'll also have the answer to the scatterplot math puzzler at the end of the broadcast. After Keystone testing, juniors and seniors will be reassigned to activity period sections based on interests. Offerings will be announced on and students should sign up in the office. Members of the ski club who sold Yankee Candles must pick up their orders in room 202. The Interact Club is sponsoring a coat drive until Tuesday, December 3rd. Take new or gently used items to room 304 or the box in the main lobby. Light jackets, scarves, mittens, and gloves are also being collected. And here's the news. In addition to the upcoming high school concerts, the elementary school will also be hosting the programs for the upcoming season. On December 4th at 6.30 p.m. in the high school auditorium, the third grade chorus will perform a place in the Christmas choir. The program revolves around various animals and elves that make up Santa's Christmas choir and includes songs and speaking roles that will be sure to get you into the holiday season. Along with the third grade show, fourth grade chorus will perform Frosty's First Adventure, which is the classic Frosty story with a twist. Both chorus classes have been preparing for this concert and are very excited. The classes are under the direction of music teacher Mrs. Rachel Olsh. While the chorus sings their heart out, the 5th and 6th grade elementary band has an upcoming concert at the elementary cafeteria. The date is set for December 17th, 6.30 p.m. The bands will play familiar classics such as The Little Drummer Boy and Jingle Bells along with some new selections. The elementary band is directed by band instructor Mrs. Nicole Roscoe. Come out and support all of our future stars here at MCA as they share the holiday spirit. The Merit Award winners for October were announced and recognized at last week's school board meeting. At, at the high school level is senior Coral Swank, daughter of Maria Troutman of Natalie. Coral was nominated by English teacher Miss Shanna Hayden, who said Coral is a positive learning girl model, precipitates a love of learning, shows the value of volunteerism. Coral is an honor student who challenges herself with a full schedule of difficult classes, including AP and LCCC classes. Even with her full schedule, she still manages to find time to give back to the community. She is vice president of the Interact Club and helps out with yearbook and Haunted High. After high school, Coral plans on attending a four-year college to major in genetic engineering. The elementary award winner is third grade student Garrett McGee, son of Mr. and Mrs. John McGee Wilburton. Garrett was nominated by Mrs. Katie Beck and Mrs. Amanda Stepanaski not only for his excellence in academic performance, but also for his perseverance, dedication, and effort. Mrs. Beck commented, Garrett consistently makes good choices and demonstrates respect by using manners, following classroom rules, and helping adults and classmates in any way that he can. Garrett's hobbies are playing guitar, fishing, camping, boating, and collecting coins in foreign currency. He loves to learn about animals and science and is extremely interested in the sinking of the Titanic. Garrett is a member of the Zion Uni United Methodist Church in Aristus, where he regularly participates in church activities. Congratulations to both Coral and Garrett for this recognition. December 8, 1941 marks the day President Franklin D. Roosevelt declared war on Japan following the surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. To commemorate this historical event, Sunday, December 8, 2013, the Mount Carmel Area Joint Veterans Committee will host a remembrance service at the Susquehanna Bank starting at 1 p.m. In case of bad weather, the service will be held at the VFW Post 2110. This event is open to the public, so plan to come out Sunday, December 8th, and honor our veterans. We'll be right back with Jenna. Stay tuned.
to help the school district, the Mount Carmel Area Education Foundation provides help to our district and generous donations to many of our programs. The foundation was designed to help the school district in three areas, academics, the arts, and athletics. Supporters made donations through the fund and recent purchases include two Mac computers for the TV studio, hitting bags and practice jerseys for the football team, and part of the funding for the purchase of a new golf cart for use at the stadium. The Mount Carmel Area Education Foundation consists of five school board and four community members interested in the future of our district. If you'd like to make a donation, a PayPal account is available on the website for your convenience. When donating, you can designate a specific area or simply allow the foundation to use where needed. Either way, your tax-deductible donation will help our students and our district. Mr. Forspring's 11th and 12th grade Tech Ed students created turkey napkin holders for Thanksgiving. For this mass production unit, the students worked in a real manufacturing setting using an assembly line for the process. Each student was designed a workspace with one specific task. As the turkeys moved throughout the classroom, they became more detailed. To make sure the assembly line moved smoothly, positions of leadership were assigned to two students. The student foreman would oversee everything and the quality control coordinator made sure the products were up to par. Students learned the work of a system model, which includes the inputs, process, outputs, and feedback of manufacturing in an ongoing cycle to make a better product. Finished turkeys are on sale at the front desk for $5 and benefit the Tech Ed Club. And today is the last day to get them before Turkey Day. Back to the news desk. When you think of November, the star of cold weather, giving thanks, and the famous turkey dinners all come to mind. Thanksgiving was first founded in 1621, and the tradition has been changing ever since. On November 28th, Americans all over will celebrate the Feast of Thanks. While everyone may celebrate this holiday differently, being thankful is something that everyone should have in common. Whether it's for the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the place you live, or even your family, everyone has something to be thankful for. Steve Maraboli said, those who have the ability to be grateful are the ones who have the ability to achieve greatness. WKMC TV and MCA Live would like to wish everyone a very happy and safe Thanksgiving. MCA Live will be off the air for the holiday break and the following two weeks for Keystone exams. We'll resume broadcasting Thursday, December 12th, so don't forget to tune back in and we'll see you then. Happy Thanksgiving. Now for the answer to last week's math puzzler. The question was, what type of relationship is displayed in the scatter plot? The answer was a negative reaction. Congratulations to Tyler Golazeski, who was the random drawing winner with the correct answer. Scatter plots are a graph of plotted points that show a relationship between the sets of data. Here's Isabella Steller to demonstrate why the answer was negative. In a scatter plot, you have three types of correlations. You have positive correlations, negative correlation, and no correlation. In a positive correlation, your line of best fit goes upward to infinity making the dots increase. In negative correlation, the dots decrease and your line of best fit goes downward. And in no correlation, there's no line of best fit because the dots are scattered throughout the entire scatter plot. There will be no new puzzler until we're back on the air in December. So in the meantime, brush up on those reading, math, and biology terms. And for today's lunch, sloppy joe on a bun, mixed vegetables, tropical fruit, and low-fat milk. And for next Tuesday's breakfast, French toast sticks, whole grain cereal, assorted bagels, and 100% juice. Well, that's it for today's news. We only have a few hours until break, so stay strong. Our next broadcast won't be until December 12th, so we'll see you then. Have a great Thanksgiving vacation, MCA. And don't forget to leave plenty of room for dessert.